Yo, hello everybody, it's Tuna. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys how you can do a craft through uh, the new graveyard mechanic, pretty much from scratch. Everything that you need to know from basically planning your craft, setting it up, as well as, you know, getting the right placement within the graveyard itself, how to make best use of all the additional type of modifiers like the adjacents, um, as well as the rows, the columns, all that kind of stuff. But in general, this is going to be sort of serving as a more general um, type of tutorial and how you can basically make use of the mechanic more efficiently and in general, get a better idea of how that works. Because I feel like a lot of people are confused and in general, you know, there is still a lot of tedious things that go on with the mechanic, like all the trading things. But now trading is becoming a lot easier than the people have like bulk and stuff like that. Or just in general, maybe you guys are actually amassing a lot of corpses that you want to be putting into your graveyard so yeah hopefully this video will help you guys so for the first example you know we'll just show you guys how to craft say a weapon and we can do that really easily by showing uh, for example a bow right because bow is one of those things that is very popular and it's one of those things that um, a lot of you guys are probably wondering how to craft so yeah let's just go ahead and show off a bow so we're going to go for a two-handed weapon and you can see that we got the bow here so we're going to be clicking that and you can kind of replicate this process for any any uh, craft that you'd like to engage in but let's just start off with bows so on a bow generally you want to go for triple elemental damage so that's local uh flat elemental damage so that's cold we go for fire and we go for lightning damage as well and for the suffixes what we want is we want to have t1 attack speed and T1 critical strike chance generally. This is pretty much our dream case scenario for the modifiers that are gonna be rolling on our item. What you'll do then is you're gonna go here at the top right and you're gonna be clicking onto the graveyard icon. So you're gonna be then put into uh, sort of a calculation page of uh, all the modifiers and that kind of stuff. Essentially, this is all the corpses that are currently available in game and you'll get here a compute best selection button. However, don't click that yet because what you wanna do is you want to make sure that if you want these modifiers to roll, um, you need to have them in different suffix groups. For example, you have one, two, and three prefixes, and you have one, two, and three suffixes. So if I were to put everything into P1, that sort of means that you want either one, like any of these modifiers to roll. However, it's not gonna try to compute um, like a triple T1 prefix, rather it's gonna, it's gonna go for one of these prefixes. So what you have to do is you have to split them into three separate groups as well as the suffixes so long as you want to be having all of those modifiers on your item. In this case we are planning a five mod item but if you just wanted to have like a four mod item or something like that and you could say like I want either lightning or fire then you could you know merge those into a specific group right. So yeah, make sure that you're putting them on separate groups first of all and then at this point you will compute the best selection and what Craft of Excel is going to do is going to run its graveyard optimizer and essentially it's going to come up with a, um, a general way for you to uh, craft this item by providing you the amount of weights and the courses that you need to roll this item. So as you can see, it ran the selection and it used up all of 88 craves. And it tells us that uh, we have about 21 tries on average to hit every single one of these mods. And you can actually click the compute best selection. And you can actually click here the, the generate sample item button to kind of get an idea. Holy shit, I rolled plus two arrow. If only that happened in game. Uh, you can click this button to get an, a good idea of essentially what your item is going to roll on average and that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm actually here to tell you guys that there is a better way to do this, right? You can see that it has a 5% chance to roll these modifiers. And on average, 21 tries to hit all of these mods. And... This method that I will teach you guys is actually applicable to every item in the game. If you use this method, you will be able to basically craft anything you want through Craft of Exile and you'll be able to calculate that yourself. However, it does actually require a little bit more effort on your part. So what we do is we're going to reset uh, the craft here and it's going to go back to default. The first thing we want to do is we want to go down to our mods we want to analyze everything that is available to us. For example, the mod tags. So here we have elemental attack and damage. We have damage, uh, physical attack, you know, physical attack, as well as attack life physical, attack physical, attack gems. Then we got gems again. We got chaos and attack. Then we got elemental uh, cold attack, elemental fire attack, elemental lightning attack, etc., etc. 
what we want to do at this point is we want to reduce everything that is not the modifiers that we're trying to roll and also the modifiers that are in common. So in this case, we have in common attack across every single mod here. So we absolutely do not ever want to be boosting attack. We never want to be increasing the likelihood of attacks rolling because what that will do is that will just blanket increase basically everything on this weapon. Instead, we want to actually be increasing the individual modifiers such as cold, fire and lightning as they are unique uh, in that like if you are actually increasing these mods, all you are increasing on this item is you will be increasing the flat damage as well as the elemental resistances that you have on the suffixes. But let's actually deal with only the prefixes for now. So what I want to do first is I want to be increasing cold, lightning and fire. So I will go here and I will look for cold and I will increase that by one and we'll start just by increasing them by one lining and then we'll also increase fire by one. Okay, at this point we have increased them by a little bit. And we just gonna go through and increase that by about like, um, let's go with 10 each, right? We'll go with 10 of each here and lightning as well. And so we'll have a, a you know, 5,000% increased chance to, to, you know, to roll fire, lightning and cold modifiers. So at this point we have a very, you have times 51 likelihood to roll these modifiers, but our item is still very, very unlikely to roll because, you know, all of the other modifiers are just as likely to roll like uh, as they were originally. So to get um, to get this modifier to actually go further up, what we want to do is we want to be reducing the modifiers that we don't have in common with our damage here. So we want to be reducing everything but attack specifically, because if we were to reduce attack, all that would do is that would just reduce the likelihood of these modifiers from rolling. So we can go through here and we can look at everything. So physical, we can uh, start off with that. So we will go up and we will decrease physical, right? We'll start by decreasing it a little bit. So by like, let's click it twice, for example. And then here we see gem. We're going to be decreasing that a little bit as well. Uh, decreasing that. Well, I'm just going to click it twice as well. And then we have chaos and we also have life, if I am correct. And we got physical chaos damage gem. Uh, yes, we're just gonna start and uh, reduce the chaos. Okay, so we have actually gone through and reduced all of these modifiers likelihood from rolling by an X amount. So what that does is that just means that the game is gonna look at all of the modifiers, and since these have such a low percentage chance to roll, that means that it's gonna be much more likely for these ones to roll. However, as of right now. These can roll at basically any tier and the way we can increase the tier is by specifically going up and adding a tier rating essentially which you can see here modifier tier rating 50. The more you increase this uh, the, the less likelihood it is to roll lower modifiers and the way that you can see what you're cutting out is if you were to open this mod right here we see that right now we're blocking everything up to T3. And we can just continue to add this uh, modifier tier rating until all we see is uh, T1, for example. So at this point, we can roll T1 as well as T2. So we'll add a little bit more modifier tier rating and we'll go up to 12. And as soon as we hit 12, you can see that uh, we're still rolling T2. So we're going to click that a couple more times. And now you can see that it's still T2. Couple more times and we roll back again. Uh, okay, 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 we're still at T2. Uh, so this is basically what you have to do with any modifier on any weapon. So, um, yeah, I I'm not sure exactly what, how many of these you need for, for bows, but we'll just go through. Ah, and we can see that I actually have only T1. Maybe we'll take one away. It looks like 18 is the right amount of uh, modifier T rating that you need to guarantee a T1 modifier on bows. But, you know, you can also settle for guaranteeing only T2. And what that will do is that will make it so that you don't actually need as many corpses uh, as as like um, as you do if you want to go for T1, right? So, yeah, basically that's how you know whether you are guaranteed to roll T1 if it rolls that modifier. Now, at this point, you can see that we still have an extremely low chance to roll that is because we actually want to be forcing more explicit modifiers on the item. And the reason for that is because we want to be actually pretty much 
um, adding extra two modifiers, meaning that our item is going to be rolling six mods and that is going to greatly increase the chances of our bow hitting. As you can see here, uh, you know, you remove one and we go from 0.127 and then we add one and it goes to 4%. Uh, but if we were to add one, that doesn't actually do anything because we already have a 60 year item, right? So yeah, we'll settle for a two explicit modifiers being added there. And you can see that we already have a uh, 1 in 25 chance to get this bow here. Uh, which uh, is like already pretty pretty likely in comparison to what the, co the computer said, but uh, that that is only like assuming that we want to be hitting one suffix. Now, if we were to want to hit the two suffixes, then what we have to do is we have to actually look at the suffixes here, and we have to start decreasing, you know, repeating the process of what we did with the prefixes, but with the suffixes themselves now, right? So what we'll do is we'll go through here, and we will look at the list. So we have already. We have bleed, we have attack, we have a physical uh, ailment. So there's no bleed tag, but there is a physical tag and we already decreased that by a substantial amount. And then we have chaos and we can actually decrease chaos by a little bit here. Additionally, so we have like two reduced chaos. And then we have attack again, which we can't decrease, unfortunately. And we have speed, but speed is actually shared with attack speed. And unfortunately, this is one of those things where you have to decide, like, I'm going to be increasing the likelihood of speed to roll. But this is what it's going to do is it's also going to increase the potential for projectile speed to roll. And unfortunately, there's nothing that you can actually do about that. So we'll go back up here and we're going to be increasing the speed by a little bit. And we're just going to seek that out. And we're going to add maybe like a few uh, clicks on the speed. So that is going to increase it times 16, which is pretty cool. Then we will go and we will look at all the other modifiers. So the modifiers that do not have tags, those are just going to be decreased by virtue of them basically um, having not a more likelihood to roll. And uh, yeah, so essentially that is, they're not going to be really like very likely to roll because they won't have that percentage increase that we are giving to all the other modifiers, right? And since we also want to roll critical strike chance, we will scroll back up and we will uh, we will click critical strike chance up here as well. And we want to be increasing that by a little bit too. So we'll go for an increase by uh, 1,500. And you can see by this point, we have up to, we have 62 graves used and we already have like a pretty high percentage chance to roll. As we showed initially, like by the using the compute best selection, we actually had one in 22 chance to roll our bow, but that was with all graves used. So we have like, you know, we still have like 26 graves spare, but we're almost at the exact same chance to roll as um, as the compute best selection was at. So we can go back up here and we can increase the critical by a little bit. And every time you do that, you can see that we're actually increasing this by a substantial margin. And we can see also the percentage weight too. So attack speed is still a very low percentage weight. So we can actually increase that by a little bit as well. So we'll increase attack speed by a bit. Now we are at nine, one in 19 tries, which is already pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we'll increase the speed now a little bit again. And a 1 in 18 tries. So now we're actually getting into diminishing returns, uh, which is where we will actually want to go through again and look at look through the list and make sure that we are blocking everything that we do not want. So there is a, a substantial amount of resistances that we are getting because we are increasing cold, fire, and lightning uh, resistance by virtue of increasing the flat uh, resistance that we have here. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the likelihood of resistances from rolling. And that is here by adding uh, resistances scarcer. And then we will just chuck a bunch of that on there. And by doing that, you can see that now we have a one in six chance to roll this bow. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically like be a massive increase to the likelihood of rolling this. And every time you click this, you will see that you will slowly start to incur diminishing returns. Like the difference between having um you know like one to two and then three and etc cetera, etc cetera. like it, it, it's substantial right so from from zero we go from five percent and we add one and now we're at 13 percent and we have two now we're at 16 we have three now we're at 17 and so we're sort of starting to get into diminishing returns the more we add and you know now we're sort of at the point where it's a very likely for our boat to hit with one in six tries 18 percent chance and um still we have 18 graves that we can use so uh, now at this point essentially you're pretty much good to go but it's better to actually start reducing these a little bit too so we can actually reduce life mana and more life 
Yeah, so if we were to reduce those by just a little bit, then our likelihood is going to get even higher. We can see that as we click here live. Now that's going to give us an extra percent. We'll just reduce that twice. And then mana as well, we'll reduce that again. That is going to give us another little bit there. And now it's still a 1 in 6, but we can actually get that to about a 1 in 5 if we hit the right amount of uh, corpses. So there we go, a 1 in 5. And it looks like, you know, once we start to generate sample item, you can see that we are getting triple 2 1 prefix, critical strike multiplier, critical strike chance, and unfortunately, in this case, projectile speed. But as long as we keep generating it, eventually, you know, we're going to get our sample item ideally. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of essentially rolling enough of them at this point to where you roll your perfect bow. So as it's mentioned here, it is a one in five chance to roll your perfect bow and what we are looking for. So it would be, for example, right here, right? We roll triple T1 uh, attack prefixes, which is, a you know, cold fire and lightning with T1 critical strike multiplier, T1 critical strike chance, as well as T1 attack speed. And we still have actually 10 uh, graves to spare. So you can see that in the small amount of time that I have spent actually adding these weights onto this item, I, I made uh, a way, way better craft than we had orig originally by using the compute best selection button here. And, um, you know, we managed to get a much higher likelihood of getting the item that we want. But if you wanted to actually fill out the remainder of your graves, then what you can actually do is you can start like reducing some other things a little bit more. And, then, and a good way to do that would be to, you know, essentially just add a little bit more reduced chaos, for example. And yeah, like the chances of uh, are going to be like very, very small increases at this point. But you can also like increase critical a little bit and get your odds up a little bit higher, right? Add a bit more crit and we can potentially also add um, a little bit less physical, a little bit less chaos, a little bit less mana, a little bit less life. And now we're at 88, right? So we're still kind of at a one in five and you know we got like into super heavy diminishing returns. But it is now a 22% chance to roll the item that we want. Again, we can go here and play around with the generate sample item. And you can see that like potentially, maybe we should have actually blocked the gems a little bit more. So we can go back and remove the chaos a bit, remove the mana a bit, and remove the life a bit. We can actually reduce the gems further to make sure that that does not happen. So if we were to do that, you can see that it actually, in two clicks, it went up more than when I added the, all of those extra clicks. So... Let's generate our item and yeah, that is pretty much it. And um, that is how you craft basically any weapon in the game and how you generate any item. And you can uh, sort of copy this process for any item, um, no matter what, and it's without fail. Once you put it into your graveyard, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work every time, right? However, in some cases, there are items where there's modifiers which are not actually um, on Craft of Exile itself and are all in general like also untagged and the way that you actually craft items that are tagged in for example like if you wanted to roll a maximum power charge or a maximum frenzy charge uh, you know frenzy charge rolls on um, helm uh, on, on gloves whereas the power charge rolls on the helmets the way that you do that is you have to look at it as if um, you just want to reduce everything aside for the non-tagged modifiers so for an example we will go back into craft of excel We'll open a new window, so I'll just go here. And we'll go on uh, gloves, for example. So we'll go gloves, decks, and we will go for the graveyard craft. Perfect. So we will look at everything on our item that is tagged. So like attack, uh, attack physical, mana, life, all that sort of stuff. So we'll go through here and we want to reduce attack. We want to reduce life. We want to reduce physical. And we also want to reduce cold fire as well as lightning. So we reduce the cold, lightning, cold, and the fire. What else is there to reduce? Uh, there's defenses too. Okay, we reduce some defenses as well. Great. So now we pretty much uh, reduced everything aside for, you know, rarity, which is untagged. Unfortunately, obviously we can't guarantee... Um, that we don't roll a rarity because it is untagged, but we can guarantee that we do roll the frenzy charge as it is also untagged. 
and the likelihood of, uh, you know, the, the game is going to basically look at the weight for this item to roll, and because there is almost nothing available for it to roll, it will have to default to this modifier. This modifier has a weight of 250, as you can see here, so that means that our goal here is to just basically crush all of the modifiers down in order to increase uh, that modifier up. So we will just go back up here and we will just decrease everything by a ton. We'll go just stack uh, less attack. Maybe we'll go for five. We'll stack less life. We'll go for five. Stack less lightning. We'll go for five as well. It's cold. Uh, physical. And defenses. As well as some fire. Life, right? So we have reduced everything a substantial margin. And to get an idea of whether like what we have done is correct, we can just actually like click this here. And this will tell us like it's a one in four chance to actually get this modifier. And at this point, what we also want to do is we want to be adding some modifier tier rating to make sure that we are rolling. Uh, you know, we're getting uh, those weights to be basically like easier to roll. So we will click this a few times until that number is a little bit higher. You know, you can add as many as you want. And um, yeah. Now it's like a one in two tries to hit this. You know, it's going to be like very easy. The affix has a 50%, uh, 56% chance to roll. And yeah, so at this point, basically, the video game is going to look at the two, th the two modifiers that you have that are available to roll, aka uh, rarity, as well as um, the frenzy charge. It's basically going to be forcing those onto your item. And what you'll be left with is an item that has, uh, yeah, an item so like if you also add sorry one explicit modifier that is going to turn it into a 99 percent chance to roll so if you have minus one that is going to be 63 and if you go plus one uh that is going to be at 99 and if you were to decide like another one that's pretty much going to stay the same because it never has actually like a 100 percent chance to roll but uh yeah so yeah it's going to be like super 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 likely to roll and you can generate here and you can see that you always have rarity rolling pretty much no matter what Unless, like, I manage to, you know, on the example that I'm showing, just not roll <laughs> rarity, which is insane. But if you add two, you should be pretty much guaranteed every single time. I can't believe I hit a 1% chance to not roll it. That's insane. You see that you have, like, always pretty much a guaranteed chance to roll um, the rarity, no matter what, right? Uh, so that's pretty cool. But now you're thinking to yourself, like, you end up with an item that basically has frenzy charge, rarity, another prefix, and some garbage suffixes. And the what you'd want to do is you want to be annulling this down so that you can actually then uh, use a fracturing orb to fracture the frenzy charge onto this item. Uh, that's sort of the easiest way to be able to craft gloves that have a frenzy charge on them is to fr first fracture them and then use conventional methods to craft them such as uh, essences and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, at this point what you would do is you would use an Eldritch Icker on your item uh, and then you would just Eldritch Anol and then use a Fracturing Orb and repeat the process until you have your Frenzy Charge fractured, which is going to be a 1 in 5. And at this point in the league, it's ten, about 10 Divines because Fracturing Orb costs 2 Div. But that is pretty much how you can guarantee a Frenzy Charge on your items through the use of... Um, yeah, by reducing the likelihood of all other modifiers to roll, therefore pretty much guaranteeing the fact that you will roll... Uh, the modifiers that are untagged and there are also other modifiers on gloves as well like for example critical strike multipliers we can write multi and if you wanted to also roll this one which has a 500 weight that's honestly very very easy all you have to do is sort of repeat this process that we just went through however we will start by adding critical strike we'll add a bunch of crit here and then we will go through the suffixes and reduce everything that we do not want. So, for example, we do not want attack. We do not want uh, resistance, life, and all that kind of stuff. And good, good thing, like, a lot of these are kind of shared between each other. But uh, we can go and we can reduce life. Uh, sorry, mana a little bit. We can reduce resistances a little bit. We can reduce um, speed, for example. We can reduce attack, which we, we already did. And we will look, and pretty much everything here is reduced. We'll go for reduced attributes too. Perfect. So at this point, uh, pretty much all that's left is, again, untiered things. There will be a very, very high likelihood for your mods to roll. We'll do reduce uh, Chaos Rest too, right? And this is kind of getting to the point where our graveyard is filling up. But um, in cases that you actually go for double crafts like this, 
you might want to look into using, uh, for example, the, the fractured affix crafts that you can actually get. You can have uh, up to 200% chance to fracture uh, modifiers onto your item by just increasing them with adjacents and all that sort of stuff, uh, which is actually like one of the corpses available to us within the graveyard. And so if you have a 200% chance to fracture, that means that you have a pretty high likelihood of potentially fracturing. Uh, you know, it's going to be, and it's not a pretty high likelihood, but you have a likelihood of fracturing your frenzy charge and your multi. But um, yeah, if you wanted to just go for one fracture itself, then it's always better to use the fracturing ore because on average it's going to take you a lot less time. And, you know, of course that could be time farming uh, mechanics and stuff like that rather than just spending it in the graveyard. So, yeah, that is how you would go for a fractured craft or if you wanted to go for both a, uh, you know, increase, increased rarity of items found or, um, which in this case would be the frenzy charge, right? And critical strike multiplier suffix. So... I hope um, that has sort of helped you guys realize how you can craft items and how you can use this uh, Craft of Exile calculator to your advantage to craft basically anything that you want in the league. All right, but now say we know what we want to craft and we have the total tiers here. If we go back to the bow, for example, we need like all of these crafts and we need to be putting them into our uh, graveyard. So this is actually the most daunting part of everything because first of all, you have to go out and you have to purchase all of these, uh, you know, increases, reductions, and uh, meta mods, all that kind of stuff, right? So you have to go out and purchase all of them. Know that you can actually buy them in bulk. There are ways to do that, you know, you could through Wealthy Exile, for example, or in general, actually just by going on trade and asking people like, I will buy all of one type. Most of the people that are farming these will have actually a ton of these stocked up so if you just ask them like you know can i buy all of your lightning cold and fire they will probably likely have a ton of them so you can go to like some people that are just going to be like uh moguls basically and have a ton of them and get them all at the same time but then we go into the next step which is organizing them into the graveyard which is where this very very handy app pseudo's poe tool uh, comes in right this uh is basically how you manage your Tetris and your uh, graveyard. It's very important because there are ways for you to actually increase uh, or basically get more value out of your um, your corpses through using the specific uh, corpses that give you increased effects to um, corpses within the rows, the columns, or adjacents. But one thing is that adjacents specifically only buff uh, monster types if you look on a corpse uh, it will say it is a beast it is a um, you know it's going to be a construct a beast a demon a humanoid an undead and um, these increased effect of corpses will only work uh, with those type of uh, basically those types of um, monsters but in those cases that's when you want to be putting this increased effect there and you only really actually ever want to be using these for the crafts such as the mirror, right? 25% chance to create a mirror copy or additional 20% chance to craft an additional item because generally those will be either a little bit more expensive than the others or harder to come by as they're much rarer. So in those cases, that's when you wanna be putting them here in the corner and that's how you wanna be setting up this little Tetris, right? So you wanna be putting mirror here, for example, create a mirrored copy and that's gonna be boosted by 2.2 essentially meaning that you will be getting a 50% uh, chance to create a mirrored copy. And if you have two of them, basically that will mean that you will have a 100% chance to create a mirrored copy. But what you can also do is you can also add uh, additionals. So for example, here we can write additional and we can also add that here, additional, et cetera, et cetera. But as you add them, yeah, you're gonna be getting um, your layout to, to, to sort of come together, right? And then, you also can grab all of the other uh, corpses that you have from the Craft of Exile. You can start adding them into your layout as well. So it sort of depends on you how you want to set this up, but there is many different ways to actually be using your layout. So if you don't actually want to be doing mirrored or additional crafts, what you can do is you can use a very easy layout, which only uses columns as well as um, rows, which is something that I would actually recommend more than all of the other things, because it's, it's especially if you're getting into this crafting, it can be very daunting and confusing 
And so like if you were to just get like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows and three columns, that is a really, a really, really pretty much like a really good way to craft. And you're going to be using 10 total corpses, but you will be gaining a ton more value out of the corpses that you put in. If I start putting here, for example, like uh, we can see that we need uh, a total of like, how many do you say? Like five reduce uh, attack as well as, sorry, we'll actually go for the bow craft. So we can see that we have uh, three less life as well as three less mana, as well as three less chaos. We can start putting this in, for example, here, we can go chaos, modifiers are scarcer. And then we can go for another chaos, modifiers are scarcer. Beautiful. That will sort of even up to uh, 2.5 corpses there, right? So we'll be negative 750. And if we go back to seeing our bow craft, how much do we need? Negative chaos. Uh, we need negative 900. In that case, it is actually better to position it here because these are 1.5s, right? So we can go chaos are scarcer and we can go chaos are scarcer here as well. And we chuck that in and we actually want to be then removing this one from here. Uh, just like so by using backspace there. And now we have 1.5 and 1.5, meaning these are going to add up to a total of three. Uh, and we'll have saved basically one corpse. So now we have 900 scarcer. Then we go back to our craft there. And what else do we need? We need another 900 mana, 900 life. So we'll do the exact same thing with all of these other ones. And we'll put them here. Life scarcer. Here, life scarcer as well. And then we will look for mana scarcer. We'll do this here again. And um, then the next one we'll look at is going to be physical scarcer. On and uh, I'll put the one right here. Perfect. Yeah, and as you're adding them, you can see that your stats are being added here to the right very conveniently so that you can just basically put all of your corpses into this layout and figure out exactly uh, how many of these do you truly need, right? How many of these corpses you need for this craft and where to put them within your graveyard to basically maximize the amount of um, how much money you are spending per craft because by using these uh, increased effect of rows and columns, what you're doing is you're gaining more value out of each corpse and therefore also minimizing the amount of time that you spend trading. So well, you're going to go through and just basically fill all of this out. Now, keep in mind that you don't have to have the exact values that we have um, on the Craft of Exile. Of course, you can go over or a little bit under in some situations. However, be careful that especially with the, with the tier rating, you never want to go below a certain amount because you want to be having you know that tier locked in. And, and make it unable to roll below a certain amount. So always make sure that the tier rating is exactly there, that the explicit modifier is exactly there. But finally, the thing that you need to absolutely make sure of as well is that in this craft, we need to have at least a minimum of item level 82 to roll these mods. Therefore, we need to make sure that our item is able to roll 82. And the way that our items item level is determined is by having uh, an average of all the corpses, you know, putting them together. And it's going to basically um, give you a, a total at the end. And if that total is below 82, you need to be adding a minimum. Uh, so like item level, so right? Level we take that, that there. So that's plus one level. And we want to be adding that basically anywhere here. You could put that one like here level or whatever. And so, yeah, you're just basically making sure that we are gaining item levels through that and so that we can actually roll all of our modifiers. Hey, you'll just go through and add everything into this layout and uh, make sure that everything is connected as everything must be connected for this function. But as you fill everything out, everything will just generally work itself out and everything will be connected. And once you do that, you craft it. And that's essentially the same thing as just clicking here, generate sample item. And that's what you're going to be doing. Now, for something as complicated as like a bow or something like that, I do absolutely advise that you, uh, you make use of the additional craft as well as the mirrored copies, which is the layout that I showed initially. 
But if you want to be doing something easy, like, you know, rolling frenzy charge gloves or just trying it out to craft scepters or anything of the sort, then, uh, you know, you don't have to, like, go full for the full degenerate garden. But in case you do want to be doing that, there are default layouts here that you can do. So, for example, the default layout with 100 mirrored copy and 275 additional craft, we can load that up and it's going to lay it out like this exactly, right? So that's by using one, two, three, four adjacents and continuing with the row, 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 and column, 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 column. This is my favorite layout and what I would use and what I would advise you to use once you are a little bit more comfortable with the mechanic. But the same thing goes here. Make sure that you are selecting the default layout 100% with the mirror copy and additional craft. Load that up and then select all of the corpses in here and set them out. And basically just go on and um, try your best at crafting the best item that you can. But yeah, like what will happen here is that you will be very likely to generate three items when you click craft. And those three items will all be individually mirrored. So you'll, what you will end up with, with is with a total of six items. That's really nice because that means that in, especially in situations where you only have a one in five chance to roll the perfect item that you want. This is going to mean that it's basically in two attempts, so two full attempts at crafting this, you will be guaranteed to have your best in slot item uh, no matter what, right? That's just crazy because these items in the past were practically just impossible to roll. It was just absolutely unimaginable to be able to roll like a 61 item like this. So I want to stress that, yes, it is frustrating. However, this is something that you would have mirrored in the past, right? So does it take longer for you to, uh, you know, like basically amass the currency to be able to mirror a bow like this? Or does it take longer for you to just put it all together? Well, it actually, in, in most cases, takes a lot less to, uh, you know, put it together here. And it will cost you probably around a few divines. Like, I would say like it would probably cost like five divines tops to have a attempt at crafting this. So in 10 divines, you could have a best in slot. Uh, insane triple elemental 1500 elemental damage bow and then uh, not only that you will have six of them so you'll be able to sell your excesses or just in general do funky stuff with them like maybe corrupt them or annul them or whatever like right so it's totally up to you what you do at that point now this video has already gone long enough and i might have missed a couple of things here and there and i do actually uh really am welcome to feedback as well as uh, your opinions as well as potentially tips and tricks that you can provide as well so if there's things that i missed or things that potentially you want to add to this video please let me know in the description in the comments and uh, i hope you have found this one helpful i really really want to be thanking elishar for you know walking me through some of the processes as well as teaching me how to efficiently use craft of exile and also the bow uh, as well as glove crafting I really want to appreciate Elishar for that because he took the time to, you know, sit with me in the morning and figure it all out uh, just so I could sort of present it to you guys in a very uh, hopefully easy fashion. But this is now a podcast length uh, video and that's, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. And I hope this has been helpful to you. And I hope that I didn't ramble too much as I just basically went through and smashed it out of one take. But I appreciate you guys. Hope you have a good day. And um, yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace out.